Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Wednesday is sometimes considered hump day. God has brought us halfway through another week. And so let's give God praise, honor, and glory. It's a beautiful day outside. Fall is in the air. And I don't know about you, but I'm just grateful to be alive. So somebody just say, thank you, Lord, for one more day. All right. Um, I'm waiting for some of you to come on. Um, let's see what is happening. Well, Saturday is our missionary meeting. So you want to join us for our missionary meeting on this Saturday. Sunday, of course, is the Lord's Day. So please join us for worship. The Bible says, forget not the assembling of yourselves together and so much more as you see the day approaching. How good and pleasant it is for God's people to dwell together in unity. So please um, join us for our worship experience on this Sunday. Again, thank those of you who supported our Women's Day effort. We had a beautiful Sunday last Sunday, and we certainly give God praise, honor, and glory. Had a wonderful walk run for Christ that was sponsored by the women in the park on Monday. Thank those of you who supported that effort. It was just good to be in fellowship and to see one another. So thank you so much. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that today is a very special day. Today is the anniversary of James and Angela Thornton. So let me say happy anniversary, Angie. And thank you for, um, how do I say, um, putting up with me and vice versa for all of these years, more than we care to say. I can just tell you that's been more than four decades. If you were here on Sunday, you know what that number is. So thank you so very, very much. I thank my partner and my friend for just um, being the wonderful, wonderful person that she is. We have gone through a lot together. We went through college together, through graduate school together, through ups and downs. We have one son, Isaiah, who is now 27 years old. We are so proud of him and God is good. So my testimony continues to be the same. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, we give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Also, um, yesterday, a wonderful um, home going service for Aunt Ivy, Ivy Arabella Watts. Um, she was born in Guyana. She was 107 years young. What a blessing from God. Spent a good part of her life in England, but wanted to be buried from her homeland. And for whatever reason, she says, when God calls for labor to reward, make sure they call Reverend Thornton. And so they did. And I was happy to be a part of that service on yesterday. So um, Sister Thelma Phillips, if you're listening, um, I was simply humbled and delighted um, to be able to be a part of that home going celebration. All right, let's go to the word. Okay, we are studying out of Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. And you know, this is the church that Paul so dearly loved. He had a wonderful relationship with the church of the church at Philippi. He he doesn't write them any 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 condemnation like he does to the church at Corinth and to Galatia. But this church, he was in a warm relationship with them, and he just has words of encouragement and words of things to be careful for of. And so we're now in chapter three. So let's look at chapter three. We'll try to get through verses one through eleven today. Would you please read with me Philippians, go to Philippians chapter three. Those of you who've been on our Bible study, you know that I'm a Bible teacher. So if you just turn to the Bible, you can work with me as we go through the word because the grass withers and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Paul writes, um, further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. There's no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Paul says it's okay sometimes to um, repeat the same thing. He says that there's no trouble for me to write and it's good for you. And you know, when you think about it, most of what we know and that we remember, we learned through repetition. We know our ABCs. We learned how to count. Back in the day, we learned our timetables. Today, these kids don't even know their timetables because they do not do that kind of multiplication in terms of memorization today, but it's so good sometimes to repeat things that, <coughs> and so Paul says, 
I'm repeating this again to you. He says, watch out for those dogs, those evil doers, those mutilators of the flesh. Paul now is talking about those that are preaching um, an erroneous gospel, telling people that in order to become Christian, they must be Jewish all over again. And, and, and he says, he says, watch out for them. Watch out for those who give a, a, a story that's contrary to the word of God, those mutilators of the flesh, meaning that they believe in circumcision. Paul says, for it is we who are the circumcision. In other words, Paul is saying that it's not so much circumcision of the flesh, but circumcision of your heart. Cut out all those things that are not like unto God. He says, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Jesus Christ, and who put no confidence in the flesh. In other words, he's saying that this whole idea of being concerned about what's on the outside, about what people are thinking is not important. He says, we put no confidence in the flesh. He says, though I myself have reason for such confidence, he says, he could boast. And then he gives his credentials. And, and what Paul is saying here is that we ought to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. It's not our credentials. It's not our titles. It's not our material things that make us, but it's our relationship with Jesus Christ. Here it is. If someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, Paul says, I'm more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel. In other words, like they were supposed to, Jesus was born into the temple on the eighth day after he was born and circumcised. Paul says, I did it the Jewish way. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, which was a very prestigious tribe to be a part of, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I mean, he was authentically of the Hebrew race. He was Jewish through and through. In regards to the law, he says a Pharisee. I knew the law. The Pharisees were the most prolific and intelligent learners of the law. He says, as for zeal, um, I had zeal. He says, persecuting the church, as for the righteousness based on the law, he says, I did that. And Paul thought that um, what the Romans were doing was right. He was also a Roman citizen and they worshiped um, the emperor and they felt that the emperor was God and they felt that um, the Christians were the ones that should be obliterated. And Paul was part of that. He said that, so I did everything. But he talks about the fact, or at least he implies, he doesn't talk about it here, but he talks about it over and over again in other places. Um, when he met the Lord Jesus Christ. But he says, whatever he did, he did with a zealousness when it came to persecuting the church, he says, and as for the righteousness based on the law, faultless. He did things according to the law. But then Paul goes on to say, and I'm going to close, that the important thing is not what's on the outside in terms of being concerned about the flesh. The important thing is not your credentials, it's not your money. It's not your title. Here it is, verse seven. But whatever were gained to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I might win Christ. The most important thing that you can do is make sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I was talking to a young person um, the other day and I was giving counsel and I said, don't build your relationship with the church, your relationship with God based on your relationship with people because people will fail you. People will betray you. People will walk out on you, but God will never fail. Paul came to understand that. So he says all of the things that he had done, even though he was circumcised on the eighth day, he was from a prestigious tribe. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrew. As far as the law of Pharisee, as far as zeal, he was zealous in persecuting the church. But when he met Jesus Christ, he said, I count all those things but lost that I might win Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that's come from God on the basis of faith. 
In other words, the most important thing is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because what the Lord could not do in that it was weak in the flesh, God did through Jesus Christ. You can't pass a law that would make you love one another. You can't pass a law that would make people do the right thing. It's only because of the spirit of God and our relationship with Jesus Christ. And then Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Paul says, I want to know him. I want to understand the power of his resurrection. Because you understand the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you can deal with the struggles in life. And he says, I want to participate um, in the suffering, becoming like him in death. For Christ became obedient even unto the death of the cross. He said, I could have called on my father. He could send me legions of angels delivering me from this. I don't have to take this. No man takes my life from me, but I lay it down. If I have the power to lay it down, I have the power to take it up again. I want to be like Christ. He who knew no sin became sin so that somehow I too might attain to the resurrection from the dead. For Paul would later write, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. Whether I live or whether I die, I belong unto the Lord. And so, recap. Understand that, that that is of the flesh does not matter. What matters is your relationship with God. Material things, credentials, titles is not important. But the most important thing is our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. We'll continue tomorrow. We'll probably um, finish chapter three tomorrow. So we're doing well. Let's, um, let me go ahead and greet some of you. Thanks so many of you for joining me today. Thank you so much. Let me say hello to you. Sister Ruby Ramsey, Angela Thornton, Sister Gloria James, thank you. My good friend, Patricia Franklin, we were Young people together, we worked in corporate together. Always good to see Sister Shirley Millard, Sister Phyllis Larry, Sister Virginia, Virginia Chainer, Sister Deborah Dunham, Sister Ann Hamid, thank you so much. Um, Sister Mary Lawrence, Sister Monica Stewart, Sister Marva Harding Clark, a lovely lady, thank you so much. Joan, how are you? I hope you're feeling better. Joan took a fall and hit her head, but I'm glad she's doing better. Sister Gloria James, thank you. Sister Thelma Phillips, Thank you. I shared probably before you got on what a wonderful um, opportunity to share in your Aunt Ivy's homegoing service. It was a beautiful service you guys had in Guyana. She's in Guyana. Thank God for this technology. So the Gloria Park and Clark, thank you. Thank each and every one of you. Thank those of you who wish us happy anniversary. And so happy anniversary, Angela. And so I'm going to be um, checking out soon because I'm going to take this lovely lady who has encouraged me is my dear friend. Um, we're gonna do something, probably go to lunch and um, spend a few minutes together. So if I slip away, I'll be with um, hanging out with Mrs. Thornton today. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for another day, we give you thanks for your kindness and your goodness. We give you thanks. Thank you because you woke us up this morning, started us on our way, gave us another chance. Now, God, I pray to you bless everybody under the sound of my voice, I think. Pray for Sister Thelma Phillips and her family as they said goodbye to their aunt who you allowed to live for 107 years. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Remember Sister Deborah Brown who lost her father and is in North Carolina as they bid farewell to him. We, we pray, oh God, for those that are sick and shed. And remember Sister Deaconess Frances Randolph who's in the hospital. We pray, oh God, you would touch her body. We thank you for bringing Joseph Carey home because we still know that you are a healer with more healing in the hem of your garment in all the hospitals in all the world. We pray, oh God, for those that are bereft of spirit. We pray for those that have more bills than they have money. But we know that the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. So we pray that you'd meet each of us at the point of our needs. We thank you, oh God, for a brand new day. 
We join in with the hymnologists and declare morning by morning new mercies we have seen. For we have needed your hands have provided great is your faithfulness to us. And now we praise you, we adore you, we magnify your name, and we give you glory. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll finish up chapter three of Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, Philippians chapter three. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out and you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.